Well, good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. I want to welcome you to the official press conference for Leo versus Fulton. I'm Brian Custer, the host of Showtime Championship Boxing, and I'm really here to let you know that Showtime Championship Boxing is back, and our first telecast of the new year will come your way next Saturday, January 23rd, and it features one of the most anticipated junior featherweight bouts. You've got the champion, the WBO, junior featherweight champion, Angelo Leo, who is unbeaten, taking on the unbeaten challenger, Stephen Fulton Jr., or as he goes by, Cool Boy Steph. It is presented by Premier Boxing Champions. And you, of course, can see that telecast in this event live on Showtime Championship Boxing January 23rd, it will be live from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. It comes your way at 9 p.m. Eastern. That is 6 o'clock Pacific time. The fight will be promoted by Mayweather Promotions and TGB Promotions. And it will be the main event, the culmination of really a three-fight card, three meaningful fights from top to bottom on this fight card. In fact, the co-main features two really sensational unbeaten fighters as the unbeaten 122-pound contender Raiz the Beast Alim uh, takes on the unbeaten Vic Placius, who is a hard-punching lefty. And these two will be fighting for the interim WBA title. Really, this is a meaningful fight because the winner of that fight automatically will fight for the world title in their next fight. So a really meaningful co-main. And then we begin the night with the rising Roly Romero, who will be putting his interim WBA title on the line against Justin Paldo. It is a 12 round bout. And again, another meaningful fight as those guys look to climb up the ranks and become the regular world champion. Three fights, but the big one, of course, the main event, the champ, Angelo Leo, taking on cool boy step, Stephen Fulton Jr. A fight that was originally supposed to take place in August. Now it is taking place, one of the first fights of 2021. Let me uh, introduce uh, some of the promoters, obviously, for this fight. Let's start with the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. Here is Leonard Ellerby. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you for everyone for joining the call. Um, in this main event, Leo versus Fulton, it is a hot, hot fight. It is a highly anticipated fight that, that we've been waiting for and the fans have been waiting for ever since it was announced. And this is a fight, like, like Brian just mentioned, is a very, very meaningful fight for the division. The 122 pound um, division is probably the hottest division right now in boxing, right along with the, the lightweight division, because you have a number of fighters with great matchups that you can mix and match. But this fight right here with Leon Fulton, everyone is anticipating this fight and everyone will be tuned in for this fight. You have Angelo Leo coming off of his tremendous victory against Jermaine Williams to win the WBO title. And that, in that particular fight, that was his coming out party. Although he's fought on, on Showbox, a few other fights, but this was his coming out party. He was really, really impressive. And he made a big statement. And when it comes to Stephen Fulton, he definitely doesn't lack confidence. And that's the one thing that I do love about him. He's young, undefeated, he's talented, and he feels, he feels very, very confident. He's let the world know that this will be his easiest payday to date. He feels as though that he's gonna walk right through Angelo Leo. That's what makes for great fights. You have two young undefeated fighters coming together, fighting in their prime. And that's really, really what it's all about. And it's a fight where Angelo Leo, with he being the world champion, Stephen Fulton is a slight favorite. You know, so again, this is a very, very good matchup. And we have a great co-main event. And then we're gonna roll, we're gonna open the broadcast with Mayweather Promotions on with Roly, 
R Rolando Romero take, <clears throat> excuse me, taking on Justin Paldo. And that's going to be a very, very exciting fight. Roly is coming off a um, less than impressive fight in his last bout. So he'll be looking to make a big statement out there for the fans. And again, from top to bottom, this is a terrific car. And we, we're excited that all the fans will be tuning in. Can't wait. All right. Thank you, Leonard. That's great. And, you know, one thing you, you do know about Mayweather Promotions, they match their fighters tough. If you're under that Mayweather Promotions banner, you earn it. Uh, they certainly put you in high uh, quality matchups. That's exactly what we've got on January 23rd. Uh, let me bring in now the president of TGB Promotions. Uh, he can talk to you about the rest of the undercard. And listen, this man's a Hall of Famer, and he's certainly a Hall of Famer for matchmaking because he was one of the best in the business of putting high quality matches together. Here's Tom Brown. Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. You know, once again, Showtime is delivering on its promise to provide the fans with the most exciting and meaningful fights. And quickly on the on the main event, you know, one of the, as you mentioned, Brian, one of the things that Mayweather Promotions prides itself on and should be applauded for is the development of their young fighters. They put them in tough and they put them in tough early on. Now you look at a kid like Stephen Fulton's record, <laughs> you won't find many young fighters that have been in as tough and as against some impressive competition as Fulton has. You know, uh, eight of his victories out of his 18 wins are over undefeated fighters. So, you know, it's, it's very impressive. And uh, he's coming to grab what he believes is his and should have been his back in August. So we have a great main event. And then the, the co-feature is the fight that I'm really excited about with Raiz Salim and Victor Pesillas. This is a very important matchup of legitimate contenders in a 50-50 fight between two undefeated prospects in the hot 122 pound division. Both fighters have made it clear that they want the lead of the division and they're willing to put it all on the line January 23rd to make that happen. So the winner of this fight really will be in the driver's seat for any of the 122 pound champions. Aleem, he's known as the B 17 and 0, 11 KOs, he's big, strong, aggressive, and undefeated. He's got great footwork, great defense, and he's an all-action fighter. He's coming off a very impressive TKO victory in his last fight. It was a rematch with Marcus Bates, and Aleem just bullied him later in the fight to get that TKO victory. And Victor Pasillas, another undefeated, 16-0 with nine KOs. He was a decorated amateur, decorated amateur standout. He had close to 300 amateur fights. He fights out of a southpaw stance. And uh, his style reminds me of a bit of a young Hector Camacho. He's coming off a very impressive win back in September over an undefeated prospect. Uh, he moved up to featherweight to help us out. And uh, it, it was a real show stealing, statement making performance. So I got a feeling once again, he and, he and Aleem could be another show stealing type performance with this fight. And uh, uh, Leonard mentioned a little bit about Raleigh. I've always been a big fan of Raleigh and uh, uh, all of his fights. He's got a real tough one and Justin Paldo in front of him. You know, uh, they always say styles make fights. Well, Paldo's got a style to really give Raleigh some fits and then and can pull off the victory here. He's got, he's got a tremendous jab. He's in great shape. He's down in Houston training with Ronnie Shields and he's coming to win. So I think out of, out of the six feature fights, we have maybe, what is it, one loss? only one loss between all of them. So we're going to see some O's go here on the 23rd. Looking forward to it. Thanks. All right, Tom. Thank you very much. And, you know, th this is the beauty of this card because from top to bottom, you're getting quality. Uh, and let's talk about, of course, the main event, world title fight, first title defense for Angelo Leo. Uh, and let's talk about his challenger first. Uh, the young man out of West Philadelphia, Stephen Fulton Jr., 18 and 0. Uh, eight of those wins have come by knockout. He's 26 years young. Uh, was originally supposed to face Leo, and this was back in August uh, when this fight was going to happen. And then obviously, Cool Boy Step came down with COVID 19. Uh, and this fight now taking place here uh, in January. He is rated number one by the WBO, uh, unbeaten. And as you heard Tom uh, talk about, 
he has a knack of knocking off unbeaten fighters. In fact, he feasts on that and loves that he has been matched tough. You know, listen, his last outing, you saw him on Showtime, and he just dominated uh, Arnold Haggai uh, on his way to that unanimous decision. That was in January of last year on Showtime. So here he is, cool boy Steph, Stephen Fulton. Stephen, talk to us about how camp is get, uh, going and your thoughts on this fight. How y'all doing? First of all, I'd like to thank Al Heyman, Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellerby, the whole Showtime crew, Stephen Espinosa, Chris, uh, Tom Brown. I'd like to thank all of y'all first and foremost because y'all all checked up on me during uh, one of the moments in my life where I felt down after losing out on the opportunity in August. So I definitely would like to thank all of you first and foremost. Uh, January 23rd is going to be fireworks. He's he's a champion. He, he has that spark, that fire in him. He's coming to fight. I'm coming to fight. I'm coming hungry. We both coming hungry. So it's going to be a great matchup. I feel as though the fight is actually a little bit underrated because we're smaller guys. But me and him are the one of the, like, the two top guys in the division. We're like the top five in the top five of including the world champ, the current world champ. So we're definitely going to make noise and we both come to fight. We both have a chip on our shoulder. I feel like we both have something to prove. This fight is, is one of the biggest fights in the division. So I'm just ready to get it on. And once again, thank all of y'all for checking up on me during that down moment in my life and appreciate y'all. All right. Listen, it's great that you're healthy, ready to roll. Obviously, a big opportunity in your life uh, is coming your way uh, next Saturday. I know it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal. And let me just say this, Steph. Uh, if anybody is sleeping on how big this fight is, it's the reason why you're the main event uh, coming next weekend. So, no, this is a, is a big one uh, from top to bottom. Let me introduce the champion now, Angela Leo, 20-0. and Nine of his victories have come by knockout. Of course, he is 26 years young, just like uh, Stephen from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, he defeated Tremaine Williams. You saw that. In fact, he was the first fight from the, when we started the bubble there at Mohegan Sun Arena. It was Angela Leo who set the tone for us when he won his WBO title on Showtime. He won it by unanimous decision became the first champion from- It's gonna be a great fight, you know, uh, two contrasting styles, um, sort of like the East Coast, West Coast thing. So it's gonna be, you know, fireworks, you know, just, it's gonna be one of the best fights I think this year. Um, and um, hey, let's just see, January 23rd, it's gonna be a great fight. All right, champ, appreciate it. By the way, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys just a few questions for members of the media. Since you guys are watching, I know you want to ask these guys some questions. All you got to do uh, is hit the raise your hand bar uh, and Chris de Blasio will acknowledge you. I'm going to ask these guys a couple of questions um, before we get to some of the media questions for you guys. And Champ, let me start with you, because as you heard uh, Leonard allude to it, you know, on paper, a number of people say this is a 50-50 fight. But according to Vegas, uh, where you reside now, Fulton is the slight favorite. Um, are you surprised or are you offended by that? No, I'm not surprised at all, you know. Um, I know Fulton has a lot of supporters, um, but I've been an underdog before, you know. I've, I've been in this, these shoes before, so it's no surprise to me and it just gives me more fuel to the fire. Hmm. Are you offended at all by that? Mm, no, nah, not at all, you know. Um, this is boxing and, um, you know, Fulton is a, is a good fighter, but you know, I want to, I'm looking to prove something January 23rd that I belong where I belong and I'm world champion for a reason. Cool boy, Steph. Listen, uh, when you step in the ring uh, next Saturday, it will be basically a year since you last fought. Um, you know, listen, some of these fighters have found the layoff uh, that COVID-19 has had a bigger effect on their performance than they anticipated. Do you believe it will have an effect on your performance? Not at all. I don't think it will affect anything, honestly. I think it made me more ready to, you know, be in there, take some punches and give some punches. As a fighter, you know, I think all fighters are crazy. Don't get it. Don't get me wrong. I think we all a little messed up in the head. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, it, 
as a fighter, it's like that's just what we like, to, and I, I'm ready to endure that come January 23rd. Now, you've gotten an opportunity to see Leo fight in a world title fight and see how he fights when something big is on the line. Um, has your game plan for him changed now compared to what it was back in August when you were going to originally uh, fight him? My game plan remains the same because I always thought smarter. If, if we need to make adjustments, then I'll make those adjustments. Uh, I do believe that I'm way better than I was going to be fighting the first go around. In, in what way? Mentally, physically, emotionally, just all around the board, just from losing all of those opportunities. And then now we're back here. Once I want like like I said before, it was it was like one of my lowest moments losing that opportunity. And I actually cried about it. I felt like that was gonna be it and it, and I wasn't gonna get the opportunity again until later on down the line. And luckily the team, the great team that that's all joining us to, to today, you know, put together this January twenty third. So just going through that just changed my mindset, the thought process that I've been having, my the way I've trained and the way I've been fighting. And they know how that, that that rage and that anxiety and everything that it gives you. So I'm just I'm just ready to fight at that point at that moment. Uh, Angelo, listen, your pressure and your body work is vicious. Uh, do you believe that will be the difference uh, in this fight and the reason why uh, Stephen Fulton will suffer his first defeat? Uh, that could be, you know. Um... I know I'm known for throwing a lot of body punches and uh, pressure. It's no secret, but um, I feel like people haven't seen, you know, all of me yet. You know, I got a lot to prove. Um, I still got a lot of looks to uh, to show. And um, come January 23rd, I think Stephen Fulton will bring that all out on me. Mm. Uh, and and how important do you think the body work is in in a fight like this, where you have Fulton, who is uh, you know, obviously a boxer, he can punch, but known for his boxing style and movement. Well, it's important, you know, it's, I think it's important in every fight to go to the body. Um, like they say, you know, go to the body and the head will fall. Um, but if he wants to move, if he wants to put pressure, you know, I got a remedy for all that. Mm. Um, Stevie, you know, last year, two of your Philly natives lost their opportunity to be world titleist. Um, obviously, Julian J. Rock Williams lost his titles uh, last year. Danny Garcia got shut out by Errol Spence Jr. Uh, to become a unified champ. You know what a victory. You would be the only world titleist right now from Philadelphia. So what would that mean to you? What do you think it means to the city? To me, it means everything because this is what I've been preparing for for about 15, 16 years of my career, long-weighted career. To the city, it would mean so much more because it would just show everyone from my neighborhood specifically that it, there is hope, there is a way out. You know, my neighborhood in my area, uh, a lot of people like to call it the bottom. And, you know, when you make it from the bottom and make it feel like you're at the top. I mean, it's self-explanatory, but for me, there is no top. You know, it, we, we won't stop, can't, can't be stopped. Do you feel pressure at all, considering, you know, it's like you would be the only guy from Philly right now. And it seems like when these Philly natives got the opportunity, they, they come up short. Do you feel pressure? No pressure at all. I don't feel pressure because, you know, like I said before, as boxers, as fighters, this game and this sport teaches us the discipline, teaches us to for like moments like this, teaches us to, to know how to endure and, and deal with pressure. So, no, I don't feel pressure at all. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm used to this. I feel like it's normal. This is a part of my everyday life, and it's a part of my job. Uh, Angelo, I'm curious, what has Albuquerque uh, been like now that you're a champion? Uh, that's number one. And then number two, what advice has your promoter, Floyd Mayweather, told you about your first title defense? Well, I've only been to Albuquerque one time since I since I won the world title, and um, 
you know, with all this COVID, I wasn't really to go out. I wasn't really able to go out and all that. But, um, you know, I know on Facebook and Instagram, you know, they're really ecstatic that I won the world title and I got a lot more followers and stuff like that. And a lot of people, a lot more people are congratulating me. But, um, you know, eventually, you know, when everything opens up and I start going out more, I know that, you know, they'll recognize me. And the second question, uh, Floyd has just been telling me, um, you know, he's just been solidified in the game plan, you know, telling me what I need to do uh, to win this fight. Um, I seen him actually on Monday, but I didn't see him too, too long because um, it was kind of brief because he was on the phone, Showtime was there, but he just stopped in to say, uh, say hi and all that. Mm. Um, Steven, last time we were all together, obviously you were uh, by Zoom. Angelo had just won the world title. Uh, and you said, quote, Angelo, be ready. Um, what do you have to say to him now? Uh, and will that streak of knocking off undefeated fighters continue on January 23rd? Yes, it'll always continue because I come from poverty. That's what, I, that's what I'm made of. I know everyone has their way of making it out and making it and I guess those that that being undefeated fighters is one one of my ways. You know, everyone has their thing. Tank thing is knocking people out. Mines is taking everyone's O's. Chris B Hop is looking flashy while he fight. We all have our we all have our things, and that's one of my things. Um, come fight time, like we like we both stated, Angelo Leo, we we will be prepared. We will be ready. You're a good fighter and you're a good kid. Keep up the good work. Let's just put on a show because I, I know, like you stated before, you are, how would I say, underlooked or overlooked? How would I put that? Either way, just come ready to fight. Mm. Uh, champ, I'm going to give you the last word here. Uh, what advice would you give Stephen Fulton uh, for this fight? And will you be the first one to stop him? Uh, advice would be just, you know, be ready. Exactly that, you know, what else? I don't have much advice to, to give them, but just be ready, you know, and come January 23rd, give it your all. I give it my all and just give the fans what they want to see. Hmm. You think you'll be the first person to stop him? Could be. Yeah, you could be, you know, we're gunning for it, but if it doesn't, we're going for the W for sure. Got it. I know a number of media people here are watching. They want to ask questions. Just hit the raise your hand uh, icon there. And Chris de Blasio, our vice president of communications, uh, will acknowledge, acknowledge you. So, Chris, I'm going to give you the floor so you can uh, let the first media member ask their question. Thank you, Brian. Uh, so, as usual with these uh, press Zooms, when you are queued and I introduce you, you're going to have to unmute your computer microphone in order to ask your question. So, Ask your patience while we get our first couple of press members on the line. Uh, David Melandra Jr., uh, you're with the uh, Philly Voice. You can unmute and ask your first question. Go ahead. <laughs> Having a bit of a problem unmuting David. We're going to go to our next question. We'll try to get David back in there. Let's go to Keith Eidick with BoxingScene.com. Keith? Hey, Stephen. How you doing? Hey, oh. hey, Chris. My thing's working now. Okay. There you are, David. Let's go ahead, David. Hey, Stephen. Just want to get your initial thoughts. Like, when you first found out that you tested positive for this fight, how def how deflating was it? And then now does it feel to get back in the ring and say, that's it. I'm putting filled off in my back, and I'm ready to take it on. How you doing? First of, first of, how you doing? Uh, it was depressing. It was depressing. I felt bad. My body felt bad, and I just was really depressed. But through the support from everyone that I was getting, it was like it kind of like lifted me up a little bit. But I still had to deal with it. I still had to watch the fight, knowing that that was supposed to be me fighting, and things like that just made me a better man, better person, and just changed my mindset. And from here, what? What's it mean to represent the city of Philadelphia in a big time title fight like this? Oh, it means everything, you know. I'm one of the guys now, and I'm and I'm one of the the, the new era leaders for Philadelphia boxing. So I just, just got to put on the show, perform, be myself, relax, stay calm, 
be smart first and foremost and, you know, just do my job, do what we came here to do. All right, thank you. Good luck next week. Appreciate that. Okay, David, thanks. Uh, Keith? Uh, yeah, Stephen, what, I, you touched on it a little earlier, but what what was it like for you that week? You know, you go up to Mohegan Sun expecting to fight for a world title, then you find out you test positive. Just the range of emotions and everything that you went through, and um, and also how long did it take you to uh, to recover from the virus itself? It took me about uh, even 13, 14 days, honestly. Now, I'm, a, I'm just going to break it down. When I got out there, my body started feeling a little weird. Like, I was a little shaky at times, and I woke up in cold sweats here and there. But I just didn't know what it was. Like, I didn't expect that because I just had a negative test before I left. So, things was a little messed up. Uh, as far as breathing, everything was good. Uh, I would run, take off on the treadmill when I stopped about five minutes into stopping, and then my body would go back to feeling a little funny. But I still... I didn't know what it was. I just didn't know what it was. So that that was kind of confused, confusing to me that my body wasn't cooperating with me leading up to this fight. But in my mind, in my mindset, and where I'm from, I'm still like, "F it, we gonna get in there, we gonna rumble." <laughs> so that's that's how I still was thinking. But my body, everything was like messed up. So it kind of messed my my mindset up. I'm like, "Yo, what is what is going on with my body? I gotta focus on for this fight. I gotta lose weight, and now I'm not worrying about my body." So that, those are some of the things that I was just thinking and going through. When was that when you started feeling that way? I started feeling that way like a day a day before I actually went in a hotel, but it was like on and off. So I would still have my confidence like, oh, all right, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. Then soon I would get there, lay down, go to sleep, and I wake up. I just feel terrible. And then I, then it just restarts and restarts. It was like an up and it was like an up and th down thing for me. So that was early in fight week, in other words. Not so much early. It was like the the fight week. The f the fight week. Okay. And then you tested positive on which day? Was it Wednesday, Tuesday, or Wednesday? I, I believe uh, Wednesday. I believe Wednesday. Wednesday. And then you just you said it took about two weeks or so before you started feeling back to normal. Yeah. And they kicked us out the hotel. <laughs> how long was it before you <laughs> listen when they kicked us out of the hotel I felt like SHIT I'm like damn look how they treated me but I knew it wasn't nothing personal nobody wants to get sick and I understand now and by having it I understand why so many people have lost their lives and 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 that type of thing so I like to say much love to everybody on that had it and a healthy recovery for everyone and how long was it before you could go back to training Stephen? I actually took, um, I, I call it in August, September. I, I think I went back in like October. I gave myself some time because I knew that working, working out and running while you have it can permanently mess your lungs up. It, it'll mess your breathing up. So I, I took some time off of it. My and, I, and, I, and, and, I, and I needed, start, sorry to cut you off, and I needed that time to mentally get myself back together. No problem. And when did you start to feel like when you went back to training, when did you maybe start to feel like yourself, your old self? Well, late November, early December, I started feeling back normal. You know, that, it takes time to really get your breathing back. Thanks for your time, Stephen. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Steven, I'm sure the, uh, the promotion had everyone's safety in mind and hopefully uh, got you back to Philadelphia to rest and recover. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was not personal, not meant to be harmful, no, it meant to be, to be everyone's best interest, including yours. So Keith, thank you. No, um, let, let's go to Jeremy Herridge's Jeremy, uh, fansided.com. You can unmute and go ahead. Hi, Angelo. Hi, Steven. Uh, first question to Angelo. Um, Angelo, you know, this is your first time defending your title, first time fighting as champion. Uh, that, that word champion, does that give you added confidence and, and something extra to fight for? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Being champion is, uh, something I always wanted to be. So now that I got it, you know, I got the confidence and, but, uh, I don't put my, I don't take my foot off the gas, you know, just because I'm champion, you know, they say that, uh, once you're champion, it's harder, you know, it's harder because now as bad as you want it, now everybody else wants it. It's just as bad as you do. 
But uh, my mentality is the same, you know, um, world champion, and I'm gunning for more world champions. So I'm not the hunted. I'm, I'm still hunting, you know. And um, But uh, definitely, it definitely gives me added confidence. Um, they also say um, when you become champion, it's 20% harder um, to win, to beat the champion. So that's just something to think about. But um, yeah, it does give me confidence. Steven, you, you watched Leo's performance against Williams. What did, what did you take away from that in terms of your opinion of Leo? What did you think about his performance and, and, and did he impress you in that fight? I think his performance was what I expected. I expected him to come forward and try to be, well, and be a dog. I expected that. Now, Tremaine didn't expect that, I don't think. And I, and I feel like that's why the fight went a lot like it went. But uh, he's a good fighter. You know, he's a champion for a reason. He, he earned his way here, and now we just had to fight. I think looking on paper, um, you know, both of you have similar statistics as far as size, uh, record, things of that nature. Um, the one thing that seems to be an outlier, at least to me, Stephen, is, is your, on your record, you've beaten a total of seven fighters that have been undefeated. Do you think that your resume gives you a strength in this fight? For sure. I, I believe my resume, my resume is one of the reasons why the odds are the way they are. You know, resumes and, and those such things make certain fights. It, it makes the fighter. And if I'm beating seven undefeated fighters and the guys that I'm fight going up against are not, the odds are going to look the way they look. Because it's like it's a bigger chance that I'm going to win the fight because I have those type of caliber fighters on my resume. Final question for Angelo. Angelo, um, he, you know, Steven's saying that he's seen you fight. He knows what to expect. What do you think that, that you're going to show him that he hasn't seen before? Uh, it's just, it's different. You know, when you get in the ring, um, there's a lot more factors that, that uh, play out, um, not just pressure and not just body work. But um, there's a lot of things that I got, I got up my sleeve that a lot of fight, a lot of people haven't seen yet. And um, come January twenty third, uh, I want to be able to to show showcase all my skills. Thank you both, and, and best of luck to you both next weekend. Thanks. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, we have a few more time for a few more questions here. Let's go to Carlos Toro. Uh, Carlos Toro Media started his own site. Go ahead, Carlos. <laughs> Thank you, Angelo and Stephen, for taking time to talk to us. You know, first question to you, Angelo, uh, did you feel like at fight week, you know, after the fight got changed from Stephen Fulton to Tremaine Williams, did you feel like there, you had to make some sort of mental adjustment or anything to the game plan to sort of make up for the fact that you're going to facing a completely different opponent with just days to in advance? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, I believe that... Um... What was the question again? Uh, did, did you feel like you have to make an, an adjustment to your game plan or to how you've had to sort of handle things for Tremaine as compared to when you were preparing for Stephen Fulton back in August? Yeah, definitely. I had to make some adjustments. Um, I, was a dis I was a little disappointed because, you know, all up leading up to the fight, you know, we prepared for, for a riding. And then three days before the fight, you know, we got a you know, monkey wrench and, um, and Tremaine Williams, and he, he's a southpaw. So, you know, we had to make a few adjustments, but, you know, like a true champion, you can adjust, you can always adapt. And uh, I adjusted. I adjusted. I did what I had to do. Um, you know, when I'm in shape like that, there was nothing that was going to stop me. And that night, you know, I was going to, I was going to become world champion. Steven kind of alluded to this earlier in the call that not just him, but you also have something to fight for and something to prove. Do you kind of feel, do you share his sentiments that you also, even though you're the champion, you sort of have something to prove to the world on January 23rd? Of course, of course. You know, I have a lot to prove. Um, this is just the beginning for me. So I have a lot of, a lot of doubters that are doubting me on you know, the underdog. So it's just all fuel to the flame. It, Steven, was it frustrating, you know, not just watching Angelo fight for the title back in Nog, but was there a part of you that kind of thought that you not only lost a chance, but you could sort of lost a chance maybe indefinitely because the nature of the sport always changes. Did you feel like you may have lost that potential title fight back then? Yeah, that's why I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, well, you seem, you, I'm glad that you, you know, you're in much better spirits and you got the fight. Uh, you know, 
do you sort of view that now looking back as a sort of blessing in disguise as, you know, getting now that you've gotten over the hump mentally, but also have more time to prepare for, for Angelo? Oh, yeah, it is a blessing. And honestly, it's a blessing that we have a great team like we have of those I stated to give thanks to, to be able to make this possible once again. Thanks, Angela and Stephen. Best of luck to the both of you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Carlos. Let's go to uh, Sochi Hayashi with Yahoo Sports out of Japan. Sochi, can you hear us? Stand by while we try to get Sochi to unmute. Can you, can you hear me? Uh, we hear you now, yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, just one question to Angelo. Uh, do you have any particular emotion about uh, Johnny Tapia, your hometown champion? Yeah, I do. You know, uh, Johnny was a, uh, you know, he's the, the pride and joy of Albuquerque. And um, he's one of the greatest fighters from that city. And uh, to be mentioned with his name is an honor. You know, Johnny Tapia was a uh, real good people, very charismatic. And uh, he showed everybody love. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Soshi. Let's try uh, Michael Rueda with Sunday Puncher. Michael? Hey, sorry. It's uh, 26 ports, not uh, oh. Sunday Puncher. Sorry about that. Excuse me. No, my fault, Michael. Go ahead. No problem. All right. So I got two questions. One's going to be for Steven first. Uh, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well, Leonard, Steven, Tom, uh, Brian. But uh, for Steven, my question for you is, in the original moment, you know, you, you had the title opportunity. Uh, you come down with COVID. Now you get another opportunity here. Has it hit you yet that it's a world title shot or has it kind of calmed down now that, you know, it's pretty much the second time that you're getting this fight? I wouldn't say that it all the way calmed down. It just made me more calmer dealing with training and everything. It just made me like, all right, this is normal. I've been preparing for this the first time. Let's just get this done. Let's just get the job done now. And that's what happened. So any anxiety or anything like that, nervousness has pretty much left your system for it? Yeah. Definitely. Perfect. All right. And I'm glad to see you doing better and in good spirits as well, man. Thanks. All right. And for Angelo, now, you, you won the title. Of course, you know, the original fight was with Stephen Fulton, but you performed really well against Tremaine Williams. Now that you have this fight again, pretty much the same question. Do you have any anxiety or nervousness or now that you have the belt has that pretty much less your system as well yeah no anxiety at all you know not at all um i've been working to fight fulton for i would say since june may or june so you know everything all the game plan that we worked on you know is all coming more natural so you know come fight night it'll be a good fight perfect and uh Actually, Sochi stole my question about Johnny Tapia for you. So, uh, uh, you know, it kind of took my second question. But uh, either way, man, thank you guys for having me on here. Great uh, call so far and hope mm -hmm. the best for both of you. And again, Steven, man, I'm happy that you're recovering and ready for this fight. And Angelo, looking forward to it as well. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Uh, beg your pardon on that uh, affiliation. Let's go to John Cudney with Sunday Puncher, also representing uh, Reddit Boxing. John, can you unmute and... Cool. I'm unmuted. I think I'm good here. There you are. Yep. Thank you. Great. So this is a question for both of you. I'll direct to uh, Angelo first, the, the champ. Um, so um, you guys are both young and undefeated. Uh, a lot of young fighters are reluctant to take risks. Just want to uh, hear what it means to you to take this risk at this point in your career, especially since you already won the title. If you had any reluctance to go into the, the Stephen Fulton fight or if you had any option to take a, a different fight after winning the title. No, actually, this fight had, uh, I think I had I'd signed the contract already after, um, no, before, like two days before I fought uh, Tremaine Williams that I was going to fight uh, Fulton after. So, you know, I've always knew that he was the next opponent for me. And, um, you know, this fight is great for boxing. You got two undefeated fighters, um, both in their prime. Um, you know, what more, what more do you want from two fighters in, in his boxing and in this era, you know? 
Great, thanks. Uh, same question, uh, Stephen, about uh, being a young fighter. I know you've already faced a bunch of young undefeated fighters, but still interested uh, hearing what you have to say about that. What uh, you know, uh, what it means at this point in your career to take this kind of risk, and where you hope to stand coming out of this fight. I mean, no risk, no reward, and I don't think this is a risk. This is an opportunity. He's the world champ. Got to respect that. This is, this is not a risk at that point. I've, the risk I was taking was fighting those other undefeated fighters, or the risk I was taking was how I got here. But there's no risk once you're fighting a champion. This is what it is now. So, I, but I feel great, and I'm respect to everybody, and ready to fight. Okay, uh, one more question here. So, uh, again, to Angelo first. So, the sport of boxing has a, a great, exciting wave of young fighters coming in. Guys like Trevante Davis, Ryan Garcia. You know, I could list many more. Um, are you hoping after this fight to be, uh, you know, if you aren't already among that group of guys? I mean, can you talk about your ambition? What kind of statement you're trying to make with this performance? Um, with this performance, I plan to just, you know, let everybody know that that I'm here to stay. You know, that I think a lot of people are are doubting me just because I fought Tremaine Williams and and um, you know they say it was a 3D notice, but you know he was getting ready for a, for a fight as well, so. I got a lot of doubters. I want to prove, you know, prove them wrong. And, and, and in this fight, I think I'll have the opportunity to. Very good. Thanks. Uh, Steven, same question with, uh, you know, the wave of hot young fighters in the sport. What are people going to be saying about you coming out of this fight? Uh, honestly, I am in that wave. You know, they're just ready for me to stamp it by getting this belt. They have that superstar quality. It's just in me. So after this fight, it's just going to already solidify what we already knew. Okay. Thanks a lot, both of you. I love the confidence on both sides. Good luck to you both. Thanks. Okay, John. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's just have a last question. Time for one more here. Let's go to Marcos Villegas, Fight Hub. Marcos. Thanks, Chris. Uh, this question is both to uh, Stephen and uh, Angelo. Uh, but uh, Stephen, I got to ask before I ask the question, it, that statue there, what, do you, what is that? That's Einstein. Okay, I, I thought it was Einstein. Yeah, yeah. Einstein's a fascinating guy. So props to you on, on that. I, I love Einstein. Um, so Stephen and Angelo, um, and, and I can start with you, Stephen. Um, when you look at your division, to you guys, what is the, the marquee fight you feel to make in, in your division? And I'll start with you, Stephen. Uh, this one right now, once we get past this, this is the marquee fight for me. I have to get this first. I have to. Uh, moving forward, we need, we need unification belts. It don't matter who, whichever belt holder. It don't really, it don't really matter. Uh, Angela? But if I had to pick one, sorry about that. If yeah, I had yeah. to pick, if I, if I had to pick one, I will go for the one who got all the belts, MJ. But if not, Lewis Neri. And Neri would be an awesome fight for e either or. But uh, Angela, what do you make of that? What do you see as like the, the marquee fight? If you get past this, what's what's the one fight do you feel uh, in the division that really is the, the marquee fight? Um, like Fulton said, you know, this is the marquee fight right here, you know. Um, two undefeated fighters. Um, two contrasting styles, so this is the fight right here to see. But, um, you know, unification bouts with MJ or, or Luis Netty. Excellent, excellent. You know, uh, certainly I, I hope uh, those are, are possible. Whoever wins the fight, um, th th it'd be great to see that. Uh, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate that and, and uh, wish you the, uh, a healthy rest of your guys' camps. All right, thank appreciate you. Appreciate that. Okay, thank you, Marcos. Uh, that's it for press questions. Let's go back to you, Brian Custer. All right, Chris, up. thank you very much. I want to thank all the media members for joining us and just want to give you a reminder. Look, it's the main event. Uh, Showtime Championship Boxing coming your way January 23rd from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. It will be that's how you the first fight of the year for Showtime Championship Boxing, and you can't get a better main event then the WBO junior featherweight title, uh, Angelo Leo, the champion, making his first title defense against the unbeaten Stephen Fulton Jr. Cool boy, Steph, 
Uh, it is presented by Premier Boxing Champions, promoted by Mayweather Promotions, TGB Promotions as well. A three-fight card. And, of course, Leo Fulton Jr., they're the main event. Uh, the co-main, Raiz Aline, Vic Pasillas. And then we open the night with Raleigh Romero taking on Justin Paldo. So, folks, we will see you January 23rd. It's Leo, the champ against Fulton. We'll see you then. Have a great afternoon.